you took the time uh, to watch the Birchwood farmers uh, brag about their work, uh, and I wanted to make some commentary after that, because it's impressive. This little tiny school uh, competes against districts that are 5, 10, 15 times greater than the population that we have here in Birchwood. Yet why do the children do so well? Um, most of them in this last video, if you watched it, were talking about History Day and about Power of the Pen, because that's the things that they've just completed. But if you press it a little bit, we just got some results on the Scholastic Writing Competition, which is a national competition. Four of our students are going on to the national level. And that doesn't even address how many won silver awards, how many won bronze awards, and how many got honorable mention. And FPS, we've got uh, five teams going on to the state finals. Uh, four on, every on each team, so that's four times five is 20 students. So you're left with you know, asking the question over and over again, how do you do it? Such a little school, and yet you get so much out of the children. And our children are not, are not the most brilliant children in Northeast Ohio. We have many bright kids, but because of what they get here, even the kids who perhaps would not excel in another school, they end up excelling here. And there's really two factors. One, of course, is your children. They're, they're great kids and they're not uh, opposed to learning self-agency, um, how, to, how to build up productive habits so they go through the rigors of our homework and the rigors of hard work, and they build up some wonderful habits. By the time they're in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they're just not afraid to work hard. And I think those of you who are accomplished to any degree, uh, work ethic probably goes much farther than just raw intelligence, and that's what's there. The second is what I'd like to emphasize in this video, and that's our entire curriculum is aligned with time-tested, research-based, benchmarked, and experienced curriculum. The alignment means the teachers are on the same page when it comes to reading or writing or mathematics from first grade through eighth grade. So the courses build on each other, the methodology builds on each other, and so by the time students are in the seventh and eighth grade, well, yes, they're winning some fabulous competitions, but that started in the first grade. And so this is a much more powerful impact, this kind of aligned curriculum, than say having a star teacher in the second grade, and then a star teacher in the fifth grade, in between were two so-so teachers, the impact, well, there's, there are great teachers everywhere, but not aligned. So the impact isn't nearly as great as they are in a place like this, where we've aligned it. And these terms that I use, time-tested, research-based, benchmarked, and experienced, represent 40 years of work. One, to find out what has time told us about good learning, in his, what has history told us. For example, our writing program is not that fancy. You will want to learn to write, you need two things. You need to write every day. And so by the time our children are in the first grade, all the way up to the eighth grade, what are they doing? They are writing week after week after week after week. And you have a teacher. Careful attention to developing their writing talents. Mathematics is the same way. How, do you, how are you able to advance in your mathematical learning in high school and then into college? Well, you've got to be facile in elementary school with your facts, with your computation skills. Um, despite all the research that says maybe it could be done another way, there's no other way. Time teaches us you need that foundation. And if the foundation is strong, then you can advance your mathematics. So it's, it's um, uh, time tested, but it's also research based. A lot of things are, are, have been done and are being done in uh, the neurosciences, in developmental sciences, to help us understand how a little boy or a little girl learn. For example, it's not adequate to just teach things. Children need to be brought into authentic experiences. So for example, what does our reading program do? Yes, we teach phonics, we teach comprehension skills, but even more important than that, we teach them to learn how to love reading. That's real. If somebody learns all their phonics, and all their comprehension skills and they don't read, oh, what good is that? So the research tells us it's got to be experiential where they touch and experience the joy. 
Then I mentioned bench has to be benchmarked. What does benchmark mean? We can't brag about having a good math program or a good reading program if you're not matching it against, you're not comparing it against something. So we, we do benchmark, it's a little bit harder. These competitions are part of it. Uh, again, why can this little school compete against the largest school systems in Northeast Ohio? It's a benchmark. Um, you're able to work at that level that says something about the academics for the entire school. Even though it may just be a handful that reach the highest level, still the level that is offered to all the students uh, is there. We benchmark by what teachers say about our students when they go to high school. That they're consistently, not just they get into good schools, but they're among the best performers across the board, whether it's reading or writing or mathematics or history, um, that says something to what we've been doing. Of course, we do things like the Iowa test of basic skills. We stay away from the state tests. We've done enough study to realize they're not very valuable to learn they are if you want to compare one district against another, but not whether children are actually learning something. Usually those tests, they learn something in time for the test, and a week or two later, it's, it's all disappeared. Then the final factor is our experience. So this, I will brag about my wife, and about myself, and about Miss Brown, and about Mrs. Tseng, and the many other teachers who dedicated themselves to put all of the time-tested, research-based principles into practice in the classroom. How do they fit with these children at this time, at this grade level? So the experience is always honing whatever is said to be true about learning, but it's always, you're dealing with people, not with things. You can't just put the children in a, in a one program fits all. It's always being adjusted by the teachers who care for the development of each kid. Well, this is a little bit like bragging, but you've got to give an explanation for why our children do so well in these academic competitions. There's an aligned curriculum, aligned teaching methodology, and aligned according to time-tested, research-based, benchmark, and experience in education. Thank you.